It's unboxing time again. <laughs> I bought myself a new toy. This is my Christmas present because this past December, a month ago, I didn't buy myself anything nice. There wasn't anything I wanted. And I was on the phone with a friend. And he said, you should get yourself one of those pasta extruders for your KitchenAid. I didn't even know they made them. It arrived today, this afternoon. So I'm going to unbox this and then I'm going to make some pasta, some macaronis for making pasta fagioli. I cooked some beans yesterday to make some pasta fagioli. So I'll cook that, add the pasta, cook that, and then see what I end up with. So let's make some extruded pasta. First of all, what's in the box? I um, did download, I bought this from Amazon and I did download the um, PDF of the user's guide, user's manual. So I knew, I know what to expect. Here's the stuff that comes with it. This includes a recipe, I think, or this includes the recipe, this booklet. This is the user's guide. And I just want to look. This is important, this page here. It tells you at what speed to run the stand mixer when you're using each of the six dies. These are the dies that come with it. This came out that was in that little groove there. This is the picker to pick out the um, pasta from the dies. All right, and this thing here, ooh, that's heavy. This is the device that is used, attached to the motor drive on the front of the stand mixer. It's a KitchenAid. This is a wire cutter to cut the pasta off as you're working with it. And then inside, this ring comes off. And this is one of the six dies that they give you. This is the spaghetti die. And inside here is the auger. This worm tool, this is what pushes the dough down through the die. And there's a X on here, an X, and it joins with a driver up inside. So you want to get it lined up right so that the X fits in. You line up the grooves. There's a couple of grooves there and a wide notch there. And then there's alignment marks on the die. And you attach the ring. And that's set up to make spaghetti, but I'm not going to make spaghetti. Also comes with this tool here. This is a comp three. This is like a three-way tool. One is this hook to pull out the auger if it gets all gummed up with um, dough. You can use the hook to help lift out the auger. It also has a ring on there you can use for loosening that collar if it gets too tight and you can't get it off by hand. Just use that um, that ring and not with the pegs on the inside. And then when you're working with the dough, if it's not going in very well, you can use this end to push the dough down into the auger. Let's see. This is the Bucatini. I'm thinking of either trying that or the small macaronis. It comes with bucatini, which is a long, like sort of like a thick spaghetti, but it's hollow on the inside. And then small macaroni, obviously, is like little tubetti, which is what I want to make, is tubetti. The difference between these two, and they're pretty much the same, is this makes a smooth surfaced pasta. This makes a ridged surface pasta. So macaroni rigate. This is large macaroni. This one is rigatoni, which is really large. And this one is 
fusilli, which is corkscrew pasta. Not really cork, corkscrew pasta. It's more like a spiral pasta. Okay. I made some pasta dough this morning. I actually made four of these packets. This is vacuum sealed. The other three are in the refrigerator. I can leave these in the refrigerator for days. Um, I'll probably freeze some. This is equivalent to one egg and enough flour to make a dough. And that's good enough for one um, healthy, generous serving. But I can tell by the feel of this that this is not going to be stiff enough to go through the machine. This would be excellent for my hand crank machine. I have one of those, you know, you clamp it to the counter and then you run the pasta dough through it to make flat, flat pasta. Uh, mostly flat. I have a, a linguine cutter and a spaghetti cutter. For the machine that I'm going to be using, this extruder, you need supposedly a stiffer dough. I went online and there was a recipe that I found uh, by a woman who said that everyone agrees the recipe that comes with the extruder is garbage. It just doesn't work very well. And she worked out a formula that she likes and I immediately took to it because she uses, and so do I, she uses semolina flour. I like semolina flour. This is a hard flour. It makes a more al dente pasta. And I use, always, I use half this and half all-purpose flour. In her case, it's supposed to be less moisture, so I need to um, work some more flour in this, which means I have to put an apron on because I wore a black shirt, and I've got flour, and I've got a black shirt on. The two just aren't going to go well together. So I'm going to open this up and then knead some more flour into this dough. Okay, I cut this open. There's my dough. And that just, it feels too moist. That's, again, this is going to be fine for a hand crank machine, but I don't want to put this through my extruder. I just know it's not going to do well with the extruder. It should be a much stiffer dough. So, as I said, I'm going to just knead more flour into this. It'll probably take me about five minutes or so. Okay, that feels about right. See, it's even starting to break a little bit, which indicates that it's a little on the dry side, but that's all right. That's what I want. That will go through the machine. This is one thing about cooking with um, ingredients like this. It just, you need the experience. You got to do it several times to get the experience of what something feels like when you know that it's right. And this feels like it's right. Okay, I'm going to set up my KitchenAid with the extruder. So here is my stand mixer. Can open the front. There's a motor drive in there. And then, let's see. That went right in. There's a peg on this insert that fits into a notch on the motor drive. That's what prevents it from spinning around while you're working. So you go in all the way so it's the peg is in that notch. And then you use the thumb screw to lock it down. So there's my little piece of pasta. The instructions say you want to roll balls of pasta that are about the size of a walnut. And I'm guessing that if I cut this into pieces, like so, roll it into a ball, and that is about the size of a walnut, maybe a small walnut, but that's a walnut, close enough. And that's what goes into the hopper to start the extruding. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using my Bucatini die on here. However, Bucatini is long. It's like spaghettis, nine inches long. I'm going to use my wire cutter here to cut off the Bucatini such as it is, to cut the pasta off so I have short noodles because I'm going to be making tubetti for my pasta fagioli. 
a Bucatini die you use the highest speed 10. This could be pretty noisy. So number 10. So there is my Tubetti, a little close up there for you, smooth macaronis, nicely shaped, they almost, some of them almost look like little elbow macaronis. So but those came out very nicely, so I'm going to switch to my small macaroni and try this one, and I should end up with Similar to this, but with ridges on the outside. I switched to the small macaroni plate and I moved my camera down so you can watch the pasta coming out of the hopper. For small macaroni, the book says use number six. what they look like right there here's another close-up these are the macaronis I just made they look about the same but these little tubes have ridges on them so I would call that uh, tubetti regate and these I'm going to spread on a towel and leave them on my dining room table to dry out cleanup takes some time but not impossible. I want to show you this hook here for removing the auger. You can get it in there and use that to pull the auger loose. Doesn't require much. That looks pretty clean inside there. Some little pieces of pasta here. And there's always a little bit of waste. You have to get inside of there to get the dough out and that little piercing thing they give you might be the way to do it or use a toothpick or a skewer I'm gonna use a toothpick so just get in there and pull off the dough that's in that little recess in there there that looks clean now I'm going to confess one thing um, there is a way to open these things up to get them clean on the inside. I'm not going to show you how because I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I just voided my warranty. But there is a guy on YouTube that showed how to do it. And probably with a little bit of a hack, maybe some sanding, um, it would be a lot easier to take these apart next time. So here is some of my pasta fagioli. I'm not going to be able to get all of that in that shallow bowl, but that's all right. These are cannellini beans. And my tubetti that I just made. And I'll save the rest of that for a second helping. There it is, pasta and bean soup, otherwise known as pasta fagioli. So that was a fun little project. I don't know how often I would do that, but because we're in this pandemic time and we're supposed to stay at home, this is a way of making some macaroni for myself that I couldn't make or can't make with my hand crank pasta machine. 
So as long as I've got eggs and flour, and I do, I should be able to feed myself with some nice dishes like this. Mm. I love pasta fagioli. This is my all-time favorite soup. It's only four o'clock, but I can have an early dinner because I didn't have lunch today, so excuse me.